because Maggie went willingly today, I feel uneasy. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> where is she? I'm mostly going to Well, if you can see you, then you're good. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. I, sometimes something will stick for some things, but I agree. I can't, I can't see what's on the camera. Right. Right. So if I sit here, am I out? You're, you're just barely in frame. I wouldn't, don't go past the edge of the teeth. Yeah, there's more room on that side. All right. That's the chair also. Yeah. Th this gets all of the round table. Okay. All right. Well, we get started. So we're we live. We're good. We live. All right. Yeah. Everybody watched that whole exchange. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Now you see how the Unitarian sausage gets made. <laughs> the, the Unitarian vegan hot dog. Yes. All right. So uh, this is a very informal service today. Uh, coming back from you know, the sad service. I'm you know, glad to see everyone. Who's here back? So I thought we would talk about uh, what everyone usually is thinking about this time of year, which is resolutions. And I want to kind of do it more as like a roundtable discussion, less me talking at everybody, and just kind of uh, as a group get a sense of what do we think of resolutions? Are they useful? Are they bad for us? You know, what, what is there, how do we incorporate them into our lives if we do? And then kind of get, get a sense of uh, what resolutions have worked for some of us in the past and why did they work? And then which kind of resolutions do we want to get? So to uh, get started, we'll uh, light the chalice. And it's gonna be a hot quiz day because <laughs> I did not make a noose. Kindling this flame of our, our liberal heritage, heritage of let us open to the presence of the sacred. Everybody look at Lauren. She said yeah. it so much. <laughs> and now the affirmation. Love, Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth, truth is sacrament. Service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Okay, that should be the hardest part. Of <laughs> That's why the lecture in the sanctuary we used to do the prayer of Jesus each week was on that because the person doing it didn't always remember it. <laughs> she get like carved into the lecture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've had it every day. Um, we need some more chairs. Okay. There's also the, uh, the, the cushy chair. I mean, there's this one. But <laughs> yes. Got it. This is, uh, we did, but it's, but we it's, have, uh, we didn't get very So everyone just arrived, missed the uh, the pop quiz, uh, laying the chalice words and the affirmation. Can you see in here okay back no, there? Because we can we can expand the circle. No, no, sure. So do we have any announcements this morning? Oh my goodness, I have so many announcements this morning, <laughs> but I can't remember any. Right, so um, one is prudential meeting after service. Yep. Where we'll sit in the office. Um, the other one is we had on the calendar to do some free to go meals, but then with all the chaos from the fall and Christmas and everything, we never actually planned it out. Now it's too late to do it. So that date, which is the 27th, 28th, 28th, yeah. So Saturday the 28th, 
I think we'll start it at two. I'm instead gonna, um, anybody who wants to get the Serve Safe Food Handler certification can come here. I'll buy a bunch of online courses. We'll set up some laptops. We'll get everybody through the course. It takes about <coughs> two hours. And then the allergen one is another 40 minutes, I think. So everybody can take do the courses, the self-guided online courses here and take the exam. And I'll be here to help with any technical difficulties. Um, so that's Saturday the 28th at 2 p.m. for anybody who wants. If you want, the reason it's important, if we do any events where we are selling food to the public, um, anybody who's cooking in the kitchen has to have a certification. Right now I'm the only person with a certification and I really don't want to be the only one doing the cooking. It's really so, basic common sense. It is very, it's, it's very common sense. Yeah. yeah, it's mostly, when to wash your hands, what what food temperatures things have to be stored at and cooked to, when to wear gloves, um, that kind of stuff. Um, it, it should be pretty straightforward. So anybody who wants to cook in the kitchen for fundraising dinners and things like that in the future, that's the day that, that I can be here to help people through that. Otherwise you're on your own. <laughs> Uh, so as a reminder, so for the rest of the season, we will not we will not be meeting in the sanctuary. We're going to be either in the hall, or once uh, uh, Quake Productions is done using the space in the back, we're going to move uh, to the back to save on heating costs. It's also much warmer than the sanctuary. This time of year. So, uh, any other announcements? Um. February 12th, chocolate auction. Um, we were going to invite UU Weymouth because they don't do their chocolate auction anymore and their minister is going to be in our pulpit then? No, uh, no the next she's not. Week. Okay, never mind. But, well, I did, but I did let Vaughn Keller know who should be supposed to be here on the 12th. Okay, so. all right. Well, we were going to invite the local UU churches that don't do their own chocolate auction to come to our chocolate auction. Um, that way we don't all have to buy our own stuff all the time. <laughs> and to, we've been making connections with some of these churches. So we kind of want to build on that. That's the real reason. Last call for announcements. Okay. So um, before we go right into our discussion, just because I think like from there that will organically seek in the coffee hour. Uh, figure we'll go ahead and do the candles of joy, joys and concerns and then the offering and then we'll, we'll get down to the business on resolutions. Does that sound okay? Okay. Joys and concerns to share. Uh, my dear friend lost her mother um, after a long struggle with brain cancer. What was, what was her, her, her mother's name? Grisel. Grisel. Eric? Uh, my uncle Pete, Debbie's husband, um, had back surgery and he's home and recovering. Hopefully, it's smooth and recovered. Pete's recovery. For my sake. Right. For my friend Bruce, he's in the hospital with transplantation. Bruce. My uh, stepfather, Don, is home and we were newly left. Okay. Danny? One for all the weather related devastation around the world. Yeah. Add on to that is the concern for the environment and whether the industrialized countries of the world will deliver on their promises. 
and one for um, Paul. Yes. Less things that are hurting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are very melty. <laughs> Julie? One for the uh, official opening of the new elementary school here in Rockland that our children will get to go to. Mm -hmm. We moved here just in time. Mm -hmm. Now, like one more for all the joys and concerns that we carry inside may not be ready to share with others. All right. Now the dirty business. <laughs> so, um, just like just pass this around. Send this around the other way. Thank you for your offering, which goes towards our many ministries and programs and community service. It's surprisingly not cheap to be a small church. Thank you, everybody. So let's get down to business of resolutions. I'm going to sit down for this part since this is a conversation. Um, I'll start with uh, resolutions is a Latin word, which means it came to us from the French. You can point to all the French words in our language to uh, 1066, when the Normans took over England. And they were French speaking because they're from Normandy, France. Um, and they introduced a lot of these terms because a lot of these French terms and Latin terms, like a lot of our legal terms come from this period because they didn't exist in the uh, well, the English language, the old English language at that time. So I believe we can then make the connection that the Normans invented the idea of resolutions to shame the Anglo-Saxons into changing and becoming more French. <laughs> That's my <what it> also. <laughs> <That's what it laughs> <is. laughs> That sounds right. I, I can't I can't verify. I the, the stuff about like French and Latin and English language. Yes, I can verify that. Resolutions, I don't know. Um I I know, but I think yeah, I personally feel a lot of pressure to make me start evaluating my life around this time of year. Start to think of what would I like to change if I could about myself. But I also you know, like as I'm getting older, also find that um, sometimes I think maybe I'm trying to change things that are, aren't necessarily healthy. You know, like if, it, if it's concerns about like weight or appearance. And it seems like a lot of our resolutions are driven by that. You see like, uh, you know, gyms and uh, well, the wellness industry kind of uh, uh, riding those coattails and trying to you know get those front and center and like ideas of beach bodies and uh you know what are you gonna look like in the summer so i guess uh i want to start to open up the conversation of uh do res our resolutions can they be good you know are, are there are there good kinds of resolutions do, do, we, do we still do we even make resolutions in this group I'll start. Okay. Um, I absolutely believe resolutions can be good. I think it's it's really interesting to think, you know, a lot a lot of our resolutions can be bad. But last year was the first year that I was able to kind of use resolutions as a really great tool and motivator. So I was turning um, thirty last December, and basically, I I looked and I was like. I, I had a spreadsheet and I was like, all right, you know, this is what I want from life. You know, this is where I want to go. And um, a big part of that was, um, I don't know, being held up in, um, to be honest, financially. And 
I knew that I needed to make a change or do something or get some extra schooling. And so I made a resolution to go through a coding boot camp. And so that's, that's when I started it was last January. Um, and here I am a year later and I just feel so much better about life. And I'm much more secure and stuff. And, um, so yeah, I mean, it absolutely can be good. Um, but it's the first time that it's been good for me, you know? And so it's, it's kind of conflicting that way. I, I, what I hear um, and from what you're saying is something that I was thinking about when you were talking about resolutions. And it's not so much, like so, some resolutions are, you know, if you just say like, I want to be skinnier or something like that, that's not as useful as one that has, that's more goal oriented and has, a spread, maybe you make a spreadsheet. I love you. It really <laughs> helps. Spreadsheet. You're that kind of person. Um, and uh, has like an endpoint. Because um, I don't set resolutions, but what I did at the beginning of 2020 was to come up with some goals. And I thought through, I didn't quite create a spreadsheet, but I thought through like, what is a reasonable one year goal, five year goal, 10 year goal? And Besides the, I had career related ones and personal ones, and the personal ones were derailed by COVID. But the uh, career related ones, I've been able to still stay on track with. That said, I haven't really done that since then, but <laughs> but I don't think you have to do it every single year. So resolutions have to be achievable. So one of the things, that, so actually. You made me think of this. So my work, they're they're changing the way we do our, our annual goals, which are kind of like resolutions, but they're for someone else's benefit, right? <laughs> um, so in the past, you know, you know, you, we, it's always been we had the, we've always had the freedom to set our own goals, but they always wanted them like to be. Uh, there's an acronym, SMART. You know, uh, something. I think he has a something uh, and specific, measurable, specific, specific, measurable. something specific, measurable, achievable, uh, radical, relevant, relevant, relevant. and time bound. And, time. and I know this because all my resolutions oh, are smart goals this year. <laughs> yeah, and H in there that's smart. 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 <laughs> Achievable, they know that, and this is like a, I think, I don't think they in my work at Badger, so there's probably like some, you know, guru or, or company that's selling this new idea, which is that if your goals are achievable, we tend to make goals that are like maybe too achievable, like, you know, setting a goal, like, yeah, cool, I'll have this done next week, and I'm done, I'm done uh, goal setting for the year, right? Or like, I was going to do this anyway, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, or what I usually do is I wait until the day before my performance evaluation, set my goals to be things that I accomplished for the year, and then check it in. So <laughs> they, they caught on to that. And what they said was instead of making achievable goals, make ones that are maybe not achievable. like Aspirational. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So trying to, you know, that whole, uh, you know, no, shoot, aim for the moon, shoot for the moon and you'll end up in the stars, which is not how space works. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. But, so shoot for the stars and maybe crash into the moon. Is that right? <laughs> so with that in mind, are there like aspirate more aspirational resolutions that would that would, would that be worse or would that maybe be better? Uh, I think it's worse for those of us who progress. <laughs> I resolved several years in a row to quit smoking, and it was years until I quit smoking. And I kept telling myself, well, I'll have to do it right away. You got the whole year to resolve it. <laughs> you know, and all and you tell yourself stuff like that. But uh, I think they're good. Um, I think it's better if you tell people because then, you know, it adds a layer of responsibility to other people mm -hmm. because other people get kind of self shaming a little bit. That if I don't do it, everybody's gonna know I said I was gonna do it. Now. It'll be a hollow promise, things of that nature. I think they're good, and I do make quite a few of them every year. I don't achieve all of them, mm -hmm. but I do. It's kind of silly. Two years ago, I made one to make sure that I make some. 
which might kind of seem kind of silly, but it kind of keeps you on track and thinking in that way. I can, you know, I've had some that have, I did quit smoking, I did quit drinking. Um, you know, uh, I did curb my spend, learned to curb my spending a lot better than I used to. Um, so I overall, I think that with, you know, I don't know if aspirational, you know, I mean, you can always make one like I do to endeavor to be kinder. I don't know if that's aspirational. You can always be kinder to yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. You can always be more considerate, and things of that nature, you know, kind of open-ended a little bit, where it's not a demand of quit smoking by the end of the year, or something like that, because you can always be, like I said, kinder, more compassionate, understanding, you know. So go ahead, Rizal. Just curious, when you finally did quit smoking, was it connected to a New Year's resolution or was it just? It was connected to several, oh, okay. actually. And I had gone back and forth for years, three or four years. I was quitting for three months, then starting up again, and then quitting for two weeks and starting up and go back, which is worse for you. It's kind of like if you're a smoker and you tap your cigarette out and then you relight it, a lot of people don't realize that's like smoking three cigarettes after you relight it because the buildup of nicotine in it. Mm -hmm. So when you smoke half a cigarette and snipe it and then relight it, you're actually smoking the equivalent of two or three more cigarettes with that mm -hmm. half a cigarette. So, but it took me a while and I used lots of different things to quit smoking. And it was actually harder to quit smoking than it was to quit drinking, mm -hmm. yeah, which is, you know. And I also had to give up coffee for a while because of the morning association with my breakfast, coffee, and cigarette. Yeah. I would have breakfast, have a coffee, sit on the porch and have a cigarette every morning at around 7 a.m. I did things like uh, advice to quit smoking, if anybody wants to <laughs> uh, switch up your brand. I started smoking cigarettes I didn't normally smoke, like menthols, or switch it all up and all that. And I finally found a book, Alan Carr's Easy Way to Quit Smoking, which was, uh, Kind of, and it comes with a hypnotic or a suggestive CD. Basically, it's neuro linguistic programming. Through the book, it like changes your way of thinking about smoking. He actually has one to lose weight too, but it's kind of a it kind of reprograms your brain, and then the CD reinforces it. You know, and that helps. But um, I like I said, I like resolutions. I think people should make them more often and not just on New Year's. I sometimes do it on my birthday. That's the time I tend to reevaluate re the next year of my life. Yeah. My birth. You know, I actually quit drinking and smoking May 10th. I went on a one week bender, and then the 15th is when I had my last year. You know, so May 15th, I think, would be nine years without beer, eight years without a cigarette. Was that your birthday? May 10th is my birthday. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sometimes I share it with the Buddha and not the state. I was all not part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so opening it up, um, what other resolutions have worked in your in your past that I want to share? So this is something I think I so I for those of you who don't know, I'm a psychotherapist and I specialize in behavioral therapies. So thinking about positive behavior change and goal setting is like literally what I do for a living. I can talk about this all day every day. Oh my gosh. Uh, so no, it's perfect. <laughs> I, yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts. Um, so obviously I'd be a really terrible therapist if I didn't believe that people could and do make positive change to improve their lives. But I think that I really don't like the idea of like the New Year's resolution or something that's coming externally that really works. Um, you know, especially something like when we think of New Year's resolution, it's a very like super ego based, like you, you have to do this. Um, so I believe, and I, I don't want to talk all day because I will. Uh, but <laughs> so I believe very strongly, there's a couple of things like, you know, that I, I believe really strongly in. Um, one is the balance of acceptance and change, which we talk a lot about in dialectical behavior therapy. So accepting yourself for who you are, kind of warts and all, and being able to start from there before you can make any changes. Because if you're trying to make changes out of a place of shame or like, oh, I'm so bad, I drink too much, whatever, it's not to work. Um, positive reinforcement is really, really important. 
And it also has to come from you when you're ready to make that change. So it's going to be a bunch of BS if you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this on January 1st, if January 1st, you're not ready. So I, I can get an idea of having a specific time like that we all do. That's why gym memberships are, you know, by February, everybody is like okay, it's resolutioners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts on it, but those I think are really important. And um, I, I believe really, really strongly in um, incremental, sustainable, achievable change uh, for personal goals, for work goals, we could, you know, whatever, but but if you're making, so I, I mean, like a lot of times when people make these resolutions, it's like, oh, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds, I'm gonna quit drinking, I'm gonna go to the gym every single day for an hour, I'm gonna read for an hour a day, no one's gonna do anything. Um, like then, then you say like, well, this, I can't handle this. This is overwhelming. So I'm just going to do nothing. <laughs> so I highly recommend when you start with something, when you're looking to make positive changes, you start with something small and achievable, and then you get that kind of under your belt and then you can move to the next thing. All my thoughts. <laughs> just so curious. Uh, do you make resolutions or no? No. Okay. I mean, not like New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Obviously, there are times in my life when I'm like, oh, well, I would like to make this positive change. I would like to improve myself in this way and then try to achieve goals. But it not like, again, I don't like that external like so pressure. You're, you're not like looking at a date and thinking, man, yeah, it's, no. it's a new year. And I feel like I feel like me still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Like, yeah, no, that's not. That's, that's probably like my own internal, probably not healthy thinking. Oh man, it's, it's still me. Yeah. I mean, certainly I, I, I'm all about self-reflection and I do think that there is some value in the idea of that, you know, the new year is a time when people can start to evaluate and, you know, think obviously the unexamined life is not worth living and I believe that, but the, I think the amount of pressure and certainly the amount of like you know that shaming you know i'll get your beach body or whatever that's yeah. that's not gonna happen like, <laughs> the beach can keep it. <laughs> well i like the beach i just think that every body is a beach body yeah, yeah if your body's at the beach then it's, it's, a, it's a beach, beach body. body yes <laughs> Uh, anybody else uh, resolutions that have worked in the past or resolutions that you know that's a terrible idea I have a, so I've got a couple so yeah. the first resolution that I made that like actually like happened was years ago um Rick and I went through not really Rick and I I went through and dragging with me is more accurate um went through a process of <clears throat> severely reducing the amount of waste that we produce out of our house so no more tissues no more paper towels cloth everything we still have toilet paper we're not we go that far um but we're not eco terrorists yeah getting, getting rid of like single-use products slowly over the course of time changing to like more sustainable products like glassware and, and things like that we didn't just purge our house and then buy a bunch of crap because that kind of defeats the purpose. But that was the goal that not like February 1st, we're going to make this hard change. It was, or January 1st, it was January 1st, we're going to begin this process and over the course of the year, make small incremental changes. And we did it. And we had like this little teeny tiny trash can that we filled up maybe once a week, once every other week, we composted, we did the whole zero waste thing um and we've learned a lot of things about it and then over multiple years and multiple children i've come to the realization that that is not a thing that we can really continue to do at the level that we were doing so i think that resolutions can also have a timetable in the other direction like you can maybe take that opportunity to make the changes in your life that you want to make but you also have to be open to the idea that those changes may not be relevant later on and that if you have to stop that's an okay thing so that's an example of a resolution that did work and was successful and then it no longer is because it, it can't be when you have two children running around and making making that time commitment impossible that said, we still do incorporate a lot of those changes, just not at the level that we have. Plus COVID brought tissues back. 
COVID, well, they didn't, not in our house. Um, but it did bring back a lot of grocery bags and yeah. things like that. Single use, single food use and, products. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, it's a lot easier to do than it's just me. Yeah, exactly. As soon as other people are involved, it, in. it goes down. The other resolution that I made that I kept, um, although I had to push it back a year, was in um, 2020, the resolution was to not wear a bra so much. Because <laughs> <You too. You laughs> I decided instead of trying to make changes to my body to be more comfortable, the change was to find ways to just be comfortable in my body. And one of those was, I don't work in an office. I don't need to wear a bra. I'm home all day. Nobody sees me. Who cares? Um, so, well, yeah, but whatever. Um, but we just hang out. Then I got pregnant, so that didn't work for very long because I was uncomfortable like that. But then after I had Maggie, then I was able to redo that resolution in 2021, which was a fantastic time for that resolution because I couldn't go anywhere anyway. <laughs> so I think if you have a resolution that's kind of small and kind of stupid like that, um, it's certainly achievable. And then you have a funny story to tell people later. <laughs> so those are my two that did work. I have uh, one for each end. The, you know, the worked and absolutely did not. One of them was, uh, well, it took a couple of tries, but eventually I ran a marathon. And then I never ran one again, so I could tell you like how I felt afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I had resolved like, okay, within the year, and that, you know, I, I picked what I was kind of training for, you know, but the first time I tried to do it, I had like all these uh, bigger expectations. I felt like I'm going to run it this fast. I'm going to run like this is my normal like 5K pace. I'm going to, you know, adjust, you know, I'm going to try to apply that to train for like doing that for 26 miles. Didn't work. I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. And then I, the day of, it was like uh, this disgusting. Uh, it was almost 100 degrees. It was outside. over 100 degrees. Yeah. Like, uh, this was in Virginia. It was like 105 degrees outside. So it was right along the, the uh, Potomac River uh, in uh, Georgetown. And yeah, it was disgusting. So you ran I, a I, half that day, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think it took me almost like, it, it took me over two hours, almost two and a half hours to do the half that day. So I came, I went back to it, uh, tried again the next year. But what I did was I, intentionally slowed down and I just kept like focused more on the time and the distance like <clears throat> getting practicing running for long long amounts of time as opposed to I'm going to uh run okay I have to run a 10 I have to run 10 miles there, so I'm going to run those 10 miles as fast as I can and more just I'm going to try to not get hurt <laughs> and it worked and I finished the marathon and you know, it, it wasn't what I was originally hoping for. I think it was, uh, it was, it was under four hours. It was like, uh, like three forty-five or something. That was it. I achieved it. Checked the item off. I don't know if I. Looking back, it still feels like it was more like an external, externally set expectation that as a runner you have to run a marathon. I don't think that's true anymore, and I haven't since. <laughs> and thank goodness because I never saw you that year. Oh yeah, it was a lot. You were you were just never home. You were <laughs> always running. No. <laughs> now the other end, a couple of years ago, I thought it would be funny to resolve never to buy a book again. That I would oh, force myself God. to force myself to go to the library. <laughs> see, see what I did there? <clears throat> oh, buy a book. Yeah. But <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I went to the library. <laughs> and, and I don't even think you read the book. Wow. No. Yeah. You can, if you read books digitally, you can uh, take books out from the library digitally. Yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> that's something I need to do because I do. I always have my book in my purse that way. Or yeah. Pocket. <laughs> like I read a lot of stuff online, but I'm not like sitting like reading a book. So I, I know it's something that I want to get back into. It's just no a day goes by I read something. Yeah, that's why I, I average read about two, three books a week. Yeah, but that doesn't go dead in the book. 
Yeah, that's how true. Digital it goes dead. Well, I don't know. Our kids have a 12 hour really long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 12 hour minute. We've got the old. And if I'm reading in bed, it's just plugged in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Environmentally friendly. I like yeah. both of them. They, I don't, I'm not one of those people that prefers one of the one over the other. It's it's just about accessibility. Yeah. Yeah. Except I've noticed, you know, I already have the problem of buying too many books and not reading them when they're real books, but I also buy a lot of digital books and not read them. So it doesn't really Take change the, from the library. So. Yeah. <laughs> but then they expire and I still it's, never read. It's worse when you uh, you you get the books on your Kindle that you forget to read for like a couple of months and then you come back and you're like, I don't know what this title is. Right. Did somebody hack my Kindle? Where did this come from? <laughs> well, I also shared my Kindle library with your Amazon account. So you're probably also seeing all the books that I have bought. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You've been putting like a, a lot of uh, suggestive titles in there like, hey, uh, maybe be home more. Stop yeah. right. <laughs> be home, you're always home. <laughs> yeah. Go out. <laughs> The perks of going out. <laughs> <laughs> the great outdoors. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the library. Yeah, we have a beautiful library. Yeah, it's nice. You could take Maggie to story time on Monday mornings. That's like during work. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I need. I need I need to resolve. There you go. <laughs> I had so much right. time, but not for my job. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else uh, thoughts, uh, resolutions that have worked, resolutions that haven't, and why? Does anyone have any resolutions in mind now? Understanding that you know, as Denise has brought up, like not finding the pressure to make those changes, but are there things that in your evaluation of yourself that you think I'd like to change? Maybe not today, but eventually. Well, there are things I'd like to enhance. Yeah. Maybe not change. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily change. I think that is a change. An improvement. It's a change. Like a, but like a change from what being different from what you are. Yeah, it's changed a little term. I mean, it kind of maybe maybe it is. Change is good, but too much change, you know, it's, you know, too much of anything isn't good for you. Well, let me give you my two cents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I, See now, I, yeah. <laughs> now I have to say something very like I mean. <laughs> well, like you said, <laughs> I do like that it's a, a you know, resolution. Actually, means a new solution. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like because you don't have to, you know, if you're facing a problem, you can resolve. It. But I don't know. There's not much that change about me. Maybe <laughs> 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 that. When you're more, you're perfect, you have yeah. money, right? Yeah. Like Mary Poppins. Practically <laughs> perfect. Or not that you're completely perfect, but things can be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, it could be like Calvin, the Calvin and Hobbes, and says, so, Writing down his resolutions and Hobbes and Hobbes is impressed that Calvin is interested in something through and says, Oh no, these aren't for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's I was thinking of a, when you were talking about achievable, um, like achievable goals versus like finding specifically realistic goals. Uh, there's another Calvin and Hobbes comic that you know, Calvin's like dreaming about all these things, and then Hobbes like, you know, Hobbes like you know what I want to wish for? A sandwich. And then the last pain is, you know, Calvin grumpy because nothing, you know, nothing he dreamed of happened and then hops eating a sandwich <laughs> yeah. and like very content. And like, you know, like, like I feel good. And it's, it's a really like <laughs> poignant thing of like, I don't know, it's a balance. It's like, um, you know, reflecting and, and trying to find those unrealistic goals, but also like making sure that you have those realistic goals to be able to, you know, 
feel that satisfaction and contentment and snowball that. So maybe going back to one of your ideas, Jude, you know, being kinder to ourselves, maybe that can help us set, you know, realistic goals. You know, are we trying to turn ourselves into something that we're not? That's what I was kind of getting mad at the whole question of change. Yeah. Because if you make, okay, I'm going to make a million dollars by the end of the year, you know, unless you've got money to make a million dollars, you're not going to get there. You know, yeah. It's kind of just silly to say, oh, I suck because I can not make a million dollars. But it is but, so much easier yeah. to make a million dollars if you already have 900,000. Yes. <laughs> 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 or our $3 ticket to get to a million dollars. Yeah. It's just a win. Okay. I'm just going to lock it. So, yeah, it, it seems like the, the what, I'm pick, what I'm picking up from today is the idea of making sure that we're not just looking at change because we feel like we have to make change or to change into something or not. But maybe the best change is to remind ourselves what we like about ourselves before we even start thinking about what to do differently. And maybe that's the other part of it, thinking less about a change to ourselves, but, but more of actions. What am I gonna do a little differently? And you know, why am I gonna enjoy it? Is it something that I've always wanted to do? Well, that's kind of, you probably know that's the difference in therapy when you say it's kind of along the lines of say, when you get upset and angry, you say, I'm angry, rather than I'm having angry thoughts. You know, you have to be separate from your angry thoughts. And, you know, you can't be the anger because you're not angry. You're just having angry thoughts. So you have to be kind to yourself and say, it's not me. I'm not that anger. So that's why it's easier to deal with or better to do when you recognize it as an action and not who you are. Because I'm not a smoker. I was a person who happened to smoke. Yeah, yeah I think finding that those definitions matter, how you perceive yourself and some of the identity. And, and I think coming from you know making sure that you're giving yourself credit for what you do accomplish, um, as opposed to like beating yourself up for what you haven't um, is much more important um, and, and much more likely to, to lead to kind of get people moving in the direction that they want to, to move. And yeah, maybe not thinking of it as like, oh, I'm starting from this low place and I have to change this, you know, myself entirely and become a new person, but what are the kind of things that I want to maximize and play up and what do I kind of want to, you know, push to the wayside or do less frequently? That's, that's so fascinating because it's like, it almost makes sense to like make a new year's resolution, but also, for every resolution you make, you have to recognize some achievement you made in the past year or something. Like, it's really hard to be looking in the future and saying, well, I need this, I need that and that without being able to recognize and be like, you know, I've come a far away. Yeah, I mean, my, my impression and certainly my work is what I find is that people are really hard on themselves and that there's a hard, people have a hard time accepting and, and myself included that nobody finishes everything, nobody, is a perfect person everybody has more on their plate than they're ever going to handle and get to and that that's okay and if we can accept that then just you know give ourselves credit for that anything that we do do is it is good is gravy it's a much better place to come from then because you could always focus on like i could always in my life focus on all the things that i haven't done like oh or or that did wish that i did differently like why did i you know eat that thing or why did I, you know, leave this pile of laundry undone or I haven't, you know, gotten the oil change in the car yet or all these things that I wish I did differently, um, you know, or, or, or why did I say that to that person? I should have said this. I think we could all do that all, all the time. And that's part of the human condition. And if you condition your brain to think that way, it's, it's going to be very self-defeating that you have to condition yourself to say, okay, well, you know, like this morning I walked on the treadmill and it was great and I had a good time and I'm, you know, and, and that was positive. And I think that that's a much more effective means of reaching some of your goals. Something that helped me finally quit smoking was uh, uh, I learned how to uh, 
I don't want to say I learned how to fail, but I kind of did, which was that um, anytime that I, in the past, when I, I would quit smoking for a while, and then I would be out or whatever, and then, you know, bomb a cigarette, and then i just start buying, right? Because, like, well, quitting didn't work. Well, you know, yeah. well. But what finally helped me was I, uh, someone told me that, you know, just because you, and I, I think this may even be involved in, like, income in AA or something. Just, just because you uh, you slipped, that doesn't mean you you're done quitting, or that you, that you have to stop quitting. You can, you can keep quitting. You just you know you had one. Yeah, I mean that's and I don't want to get too into the weeds, but when we talk about you know addiction or or behaviors that you want to change, that to, to take the shame out of it, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people you know had that cigarette or whatever I did and, and it's like oh well because I'm just so weak or I'm just such a you know a lousy person but if you can say okay well I did that and what did I learn from that experience what were the factors that led me to engage in that behavior and how can I circumvent them in the future like to take relapse as part of the process to help you gather information it's without that like shaming like oh like I, I screwed up I failed at this mm-hmm. then you know, it's much, much more effective. We are about at time. Not to, to pretend to be a therapist. Same time. Really <laughs> Seriously. Um, are there any, is there anything else anyone wants to share? Before, before we wrap this up and uh, the chalice and get to the, our, the UU addiction coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so just to, to recap, overall, we think that resolutions can be good, can be, can be healthy if approached in a healthy way. That they don't necessarily have to precipitate action it could be an evaluated period, which is, which is fine. And that uh, we want to make sure we're not tying ourselves to uh, goals that are based on uh, change that may not be good for us or goal or change based on what we think others want as opposed to what we want for ourselves. And that ultimately we got to be ready to make that change. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And if it doesn't and, work, that's okay. And it's okay if you're not if we're not ready to make those changes. Yeah, you can learn something from that. <laughs> okay. That's actually a lot better. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I feel better. Yeah, that's your indulgent effort. It's great to have your perspective. I could have let you go on all day. I could. <laughs> so uh now the uh, the last there's one more pop quiz. One more hard hard hard. We extinguish, extinguish this flame, but, but not the light of truth, or the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. I think that one's easier to remember because it is. Um, Tied to the ritual of then you get coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, yeah, the horse that runs a little faster because it knows it's near the bottom. Yeah. <laughs>